U.S. Vice President and Democratic presidential candidate Kamala Harris has picked Minnesota Governor Tim Walz as her running mate for the upcoming presidential election. However, Harris has not made an official statement about Walz yet. The duo will appear together in their first joint rally in Philadelphia tonight where Harris will officially introduce Walz as her running mate. Then they will tour key battleground states. Congressman Walls is a former educator and has also served in the Army National Guard. He gained national attention for his strategy of calling Trump and J.D. Vance weird, a phrase Harris has adopted when talking about her rival. Vice President Kamala Harris's chemistry with her newly selected running mate, Minnesota Governor Tim Walls, was really important and it really clicked for both of them, a source close to Walls told CNN. Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump's campaign responded to announcement of Walls as Harris's running mate, calling the congressman as a San Francisco liberal wannabe and a dangerously liberal extremist. The Institute for the Study of War ISW reports that Russia's readiness to provide weapons to Yemeni Houthis demonstrates Vladimir Putin's desire to pressure the West into abandoning support for Ukraine while also revealing Russia's growing dependence on Iran for high-precision weapons and components. According to CNN sources, the Kremlin planned to transfer missiles and other military equipment to Houthis in Yemen but did not follow through after diplomatic pressure. The ISW states that Russia's reported plan highlights its growing military partnership with Iran and suggests that Russia likely aims to leverage Iranian proxies to indirectly confront the West and shape Western decision-making. The analysts note this aligns with Russian information operations aimed at encouraging Western self-deterrence from supporting Ukraine over fears of confrontation with Russia. Putin's willingness to consider supporting the Houthis as they attack Israel and international shipping is part of deepening Russian-Iranian military cooperation and Russia's increasing reliance on Iran for high-precision weapons and components, the ISW reports. Increased Russian willingness to use Iran and its proxies to indirectly confront the West will disrupt Russian attempts to portray Russian foreign policy in the Middle East as balanced and may further complicate Russian relations with countries concerned about Russian-Iranian cooperation. According to CNN, citing U.S. officials and other sources, Russia was preparing to deliver missiles and other military equipment to the Houthis in late July 2024. U.S. officials said they were unsure, unsure whether Saudi Arabia's protests were the determining factor in halting the planned transfer. CNN sources said at least three Russian military officers visited Yemen in late July 2024 to advise the Houthis and possibly help them conduct live fire exercises, which the Houthis later cancelled. Ukraine has achieved significant successes in the fight against the Russian Black Sea Fleet, but it is too early to talk about a complete and unconditional victory while there are Russian missile carriers in the Black Sea. War veteran and public activist of Ukraine Oleg Simoroz told Osborevetel media outlet in an interview about what weapons will help the Ukrainian armed forces finally get rid of them. Thus, he noted that if we talk about ATACMS, they have somewhat different tasks they were not developed for sinking ships. At the same time, the Ukrainian missile Neptune was developed specifically for these tasks. Of course, new modern UAVs will help us here, but in fact, they are not so effective at sea because they are easy to spot at sea. But starting with the cruiser Moskva, guided cruise missiles that can maneuver have proven themselves best at sea, he said, noting that by developing the Neptune missile program, Ukraine can close these issues. In addition, he noted that aircraft, in particular the F-16, are very well suited for such tasks. This aircraft can carry a whole variety of missiles completely different, short, medium and long range, anti-ship, maneuvering, etc. 
If we successfully use the F-16, go somewhere from the Odessa region to the Black Sea and fire high-quality Western-guided missiles, and they have modifications of missiles developed specifically against ships, I think we will be able to significantly weaken Russian missile carriers, he said. At the same time, this will not be easy, he noted, since the Russians do not use medium or short-range missile carriers and try not to approach Ukrainian territory. He believes that only when there are no Russian missile-carrying ships in the Black Sea will it be possible to talk about victory over the Russian Black Sea fleet. At the same time, Simoroz noted, taking into account Ukraine's capabilities and rather modest anti-ship weapons, and considering the type of blow dealt to the Black Sea fleet, one can truly speak of serious successes in the fight against the Russian fleet. I would call this campaign one of the most successful campaigns of the Ukrainian armed forces during a full-scale invasion, he emphasized. Recently, the spokesman for the Ukrainian Navy, Dmitry Pletenchuk, said that the sea-based caliber missiles that the Russian Federation is using against Ukraine are no longer as effective as they were at the beginning of the full-scale invasion, so the enemy is using them in a comprehensive manner. Ukrainian special services reported that the upgraded Sea Baby drones can now carry more than 1,000 kilograms of explosives and cover a distance of more than 1,000 kilometers. This means that they can now hit targets anywhere in the Black Sea.